So this is the true story about the time that I stole my mum's car, crashed it into a farm, and set fire to everything. I stole my mum's car and blew it up. I just want to give a massive shout out to my friend Aura Gold who created the comic artwork for my story. Aura is creating a comic book trilogy called Wheel of a Beefer and you can pre-order part one now. It's only £20 and the link is in the description below. So this was when I was about 14 or 15 years old. I was still at school and I was just the worst behaved kid ever. I used to get in trouble daily. I was just the biggest little shit ever. And in this time, I just had this amazing idea that I really wanted to just take my mum's car out for a drive. But the problem was with that was that one, I was too young to drive, so I had no license. Two, I had zero experience in driving at all. And three, how was I gonna take my mum's car without her knowing? So this is when me and my friends came up with this miraculous plan that we would leave school, we'd go back to my house, and we would wait for my mum to finish work and get home from work. And when she came home from work, we were gonna plan a drinking game and completely rig it so that my mum would lose most of the time. And then the second step of the plan was, we would have one bottle of vodka and empty it and fill it with water, and then the second bottle of vodka would actually be a bottle of vodka. And we would rig it so that my mum, on this drinking game, would lose pretty much all the time, so she would have a shot of vodka, and every time me and my friends lost, we would have a shot of water. And we made sure that we barely lost. So my mum got back from work, we're playing this drinking game, we keep making my mum lose. My mum, for some reason, just totally didn't have a clue that we were even doing this. So so she keeps having a shot of vodka, we're drinking water to the point where my mum is so drunk that she passes out at the dining room table. So me and my friends, we all pick her up once she's passed out and we just start to escort her to the bedroom and we chuck her on the bed and then we go find the car keys and steal the car. So we get to the car, we've got the keys, but then we realise we still need to try and get the car out of the drive onto the main road. But we don't know how to even reverse, so we decided Let's not reverse the car out in case we crash it before we actually crash it. <laughs> let's just take the handbrake off and let's just roll the car out. So we roll the car out to the main road, the back of the car is like out into the main street, we all get in the car and then try and figure out how to even drive the thing. After a few minutes of just trying to figure out where everything is and how to even start the car and how to even drive, I remember my friend telling me how to use the clutch and acceleration thing. I mean, I've played lots of video games, so I had some sort of knowledge to it, I guess. I mean, I must have done because this actually is a true story and this really happened. So we finally get the car going, I figured out how to get the acceleration and the clutch working, and then we're off. We're off on our own little adventure like Sam and Frodo going to Mordor. Apart from we're actually just unknowingly going to go and crash a car. After about 20-30 minutes of driving the car around, it's late at night, me and my friends started to get a little bit worried and paranoid that we were going to get caught. So I remember us feeling like, right, let's just, let's just turn around and head back home. So I turned to this car park, which is a car park of a golf range in one of the villages. And we pull into this car park, we're trying to turn the car around. I can't figure out how to get out. It's night time, I can barely see over the steering wheel, it's dark, and I just can't figure it out. So I look out the window at one point to find that I'm actually driving on the golf range. I was fully on one of the greens trying to turn around and get out of a car park that we totally somehow missed anyway, which is actually another stupid thing about this story that we probably destroyed part of a golf course as well. Fucking what idiots. Anyway, we get back onto the road, we're driving home, we're just trying to get back to my mum's village as quick as possible, and as we're driving home, one of my friends turns to me and says, Waff, why don't you take this left street here, it's a country road, it goes straight all the way back to your mum's village, you can go as fast as you want, yeah! What a great idea! So I pull off onto this country road, I'm driving down it as fast as I can, it's a one-way street all the way to my mum's village, so I thought. That whole thing about this road being a straight road all the way to my mum's village was absolute bollocks. Because as I'm driving down this, from my foot down to the pedal, there's like a bump in the road, and straight after that bump, there was a 90 degrees turn to the right, which we totally missed. So we completely missed the road, we land in a field, we're going so fast in an absolute panic trying to turn the car back onto the road, and all I can see is just nighttime and field. There's nothing, I can't see the road, I can't see anything. So I'm turning the car as fast as I can, and then all of a sudden, this barn appears. No. 
man. And then all of a sudden, this massive smash to drive straight into the side of this barn. And there was a huge impact. I remember all of us just going, <laughs> uh, uh, are you all right? Is everyone all right? Thankfully, no one was hurt. I think my friend had hurt his leg, but that was it. The maddest thing was is that the whole windscreen had come through because some of the tree branches and some of the metal from the, from the barn had actually come through the car. So thank God we crashed in that position because anywhere else, I might not have been here, boys and girls. The most surreal thing about this whole moment was that even though we knew we had this crazy crash that had just happened, we still had our music playing and it was like happy hardcore bonkers music, like hard house music that was still playing. Yeah, yeah. So I remember the feeling of like, oh my God, what's just happened? It doesn't feel like anything's happened because the music just made me feel like nothing really had happened. It was really weird, but anyway. So we just crashed the car, but I remember the feeling of like, oh, it'll be fine. We'll just reverse the car and drive it back to my mum's. She'll never know. So I force open the car door. I squeeze myself out and take one look at the car and realize, oh fuck, we are absolutely screwed. <laughs> car's completely destroyed. Half of the car is in the barn. Inside the barn is just loads of hay bales. Thank God it was just hay bales. It wasn't like animals or anything else. It was just a barn that was covering loads of hay bales. No. So the front half of the car is smashed into that. The back side is still sticking out into like the field. We all managed to get out and then we're like, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna get away with this? Like, how do we actually get away with this. And that's when we had this amazing idea. Idea one. So the plan was, me and all my friends would go hide in a ditch and one of us would light a cigarette and run to the car, open up the petrol cap, throw a cigarette into the petrol cap and run away and wait for the car to explode and just dive out of the way just in time like Tom Cruise and Mission Impossible. Which, uh, it didn't work like that. It did actually happen where I went over to the car and lit a cigarette and threw it into the petrol cap and ran away thinking that the car was gonna explode and then I would get away just in time safely and hide in the ditch with my friends. Then we did it. We blew up the car. That worked. But that didn't work. So we then had to figure out what to do next. And stupidly, we all decided to get up and go over to the car and try and figure out our next plan. Still knowing that there's a lit cigarette in the petrol cap, the car could have blown up. I mean, I don't even know if, if that even works. It didn't for us. But still thinking back that it could have done, but we were still just around the car is so stupid. <laughs> but anyway, now it was time for idea two. Idea two. So just before I go into the plan of idea two, oh. just so you have an understanding of this, in the boot of my mum's car was 300 pounds worth of champagne that my mum had bought for my nana and granddad's golden anniversary, 50 years celebration of marriage, which was taking place the day after we crashed the car. So yeah, this, this story just gets way worse. <laughs> So now we get to the plan. So the plan was me and my friends would smash every single bottle of champagne all around the car and then we'd light it because all alcohol's flammable and then it'll blow up the car and we get away with it and everything's all good. But yeah, that plan, uh, that plan failed as well. Aww. We literally just made the car soaking wet. <laughs> it didn't work at all. So now we were stuck. How are we going to blow the car up and get away with it? We've lost, we're totally out of ideas now. What do we do? Until idea three idea three and it actually worked idea three fully worked We ripped up all the car seats with the car keys We pulled out all the foam we set fire to it And then it all started burning inside the car as soon as we seen the flames and it all started getting bigger and bigger That was it. We were like right. We need to get home quick Let's just run home and also just so you know we're in a field about 10 minutes drive from a mum's house So on foot it was about an hour so me and my friends just start running for it. So me and my friends were sprinting down this field, we're trying to get home, we keep looking over our shoulder and we can just see the fire getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But the problem was, was that the flames were getting so big that we all started to think, how are we actually getting so far away but the fire's getting bigger as we're going? And that's because we didn't even think about it. Obviously, the car is inside a barn filled with hay bales. So the fire has just gone into the barn and started setting fire to the whole barn and all the hay bales. So as we're running home, there's this huge fire just getting in the distance, all the smoke, and we're getting further away, but the fire's getting so much more bigger. I remember the feeling of like, holy shit, 
what have we done? Oh, so we finally get back to my mum's house. It's probably about midnight. We go into my bedroom. We're all absolutely knackered. I remember us all just getting into bed and I remember us all just being a little bit shaken up, a bit like, oh my God, I can't believe we've just done that. And I remember just wanting to go to sleep and to wake up and for it to not be real. I went to sleep and then the following morning, I just wake up to hearing my mum's voice going, John, get up. We've got to go to your nana and granddad's. But then I look around the room and see all my friends around me and I start to have the realization kick in that no this 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 probably happened john so i got up and went to my bedroom door and opened it and as i looked down there's just all these muddy footprints leading from the front of the house all the way to my bedroom my mum starts shouting at me going what's all these muddy footprints john i don't even know what i even told her about that i must have come up with something but i remember having a look out of my mum's bedroom window to the drive and seeing that the car wasn't there and I remember this overwhelming feeling of absolute doom. Feeling of doom of like, oh my God, this is actually real. What have I done? And what am I going to say to my mum? So in the most unsuspicious way possible, I just shouted, Mum, I think your car's been stolen. <laughs> like that wasn't suspicious at all. But my mum didn't click on. She ran outside and seeing obviously a car isn't there. She started panicking and worrying, thinking that someone's stolen the car. She calls the police. Uh, I think she actually had a hire car. As I remember, my mum hired a car for the day because now we had to drive all the way to Blackpool for my nana and granddad's 50 years anniversary. So we go to Blackpool. I'm at this anniversary with nana and granddad and all my family. My best friends come with me as well. He wasn't in the car, but I told him all about it. And we sat there and I remember my uncle doing a speech and just saying, unfortunately, everyone, there was £300 worth of champagne that Linda had bought, but someone stole the car last night, so we don't have any of it. I remember my best friend just going, what have you done? And me being like, I don't even fucking know. Anyway, time passes by. We get back home from my nan and granddad's. We get home and then the police come round. The police have come round for us to do a statement and they're also asking questions mainly to me. They are on me so hard. They're asking me so many questions. I'm also asking them loads of questions like, so did you manage to find any uh, evidence? Was there anything at the scene? Did you find any fingerprints or anything like that? <laughs> Remember the police telling us, well, this car is a new car and you can't just hotwire these cars. And also there was no signs of a break and there was no glass. So the only way this car could have been taken was with keys. Anyway, the police go, more time passes by. I don't remember how long now at this point, but eventually my mum starts to ask questions and almost like she's getting suspicious. It's almost like my mum is onto something. I remember her telling me that someone in the village had told her that they see me drive the car on that night. And obviously I was like, what are you on about? No, I never, I've never drove your car ever. <laughs> but that's when my mum came up with her own miraculous plan. Mum's plan. My mum drove to my best friend Adam's house and she knocked on his door, he answered the door and she said, Adam, uh, I found out who stole my car. And my mate said, well, who was it? Who, who did it? And she said, John stole it, he's told me. And he responded, I told him he was stupid for doing it. So that was it, I was done for, I was caught. My best friend grasped me up, my mum tricked him into it. She came up with her own miraculous plan and actually it worked. It fully worked, I was caught. I remember one night I was sat in my bedroom, I'm watching films, I'm in deep shit with my mum and my stepdad, and I'm watching some movie, and I've got my PC to the side, which has got all of my coursework on at, from school, and I was really good on some courses, like with media and drama and stuff like that, I was really good, so I had all my coursework on this PC, but my stepdad just had enough, and he came in one night with a baseball bat and just smashed my computer to pieces literally smashed everything to pieces and i mean i kind of deserved it but at the same time I, I lost all my gcse's i never got to sit half my gcse's i failed half of them because i just lost all my coursework so is what it is isn't it in the end my mum and my stepdad were like you need to go to the police and hand yourself in you just need to go and do it because that's what you have to do so they drove me to the police station i handed myself in they arrested me uh, they took my fingerprints, my mug shots, and whatever else. I don't know if they did DNA or something, I can't remember, but I fully got arrested. I had to go through all the process you do when you get arrested. And uh, the funny thing is, the police told me they knew that it was me the whole time. They were like, there was no way that anyone had stolen that car. They were like, we knew it was you. You needed car keys, you were asking loads of stupid questions, and they just knew it was me. <laughs> stupid. So at the end of all this, my punishment was, 
I only had to do two hours of community service where I had to go along a beach, had to pick up litter from a beach and tidy up a beach. I also had to just scrub graffiti off walls and under bridges and just like try and scrub graffiti off stuff. But the guy who took me on this community service, after about 30 minutes, he literally turned to me and was like, John, I can tell that you're not a bad kid. I work with bad kids all the time. Come on, let's take you for a McDonald's. And that was it. He cut my community service short by like an hour and a half and I got treated to a McDonald's and drove home. After all of that, after everything that happened, at the end of everything, I was treated to a McDonald's. <laughs> so actually, in the end, <laughs> it was worth doing. No, it wasn't worth doing at all. It was a nightmare, it caused so much stress to my mum, to my stepdad. I lost all my GCSEs. I couldn't sit half of them, I failed loads of GCSEs because of this whole thing. I obviously stole my mum's car. She had to get a new car that probably cost her loads of money. Yeah. In fact, I actually did a video with my mum. I'll try and see if I can post it on here just at the end so you can see it. But my mum drove me to the location where we crashed the car and now there's like no barn. There's like a little bit of it and that's probably because we burned it all down. So yeah. Don't steal your mum's car kids and if you do try not crash it and blow it up in a farm. And it is here. You turn left here. I remember turning left here. We would have turned right. Yeah, and then you go down this road and it's like an hour road and I fucking drove straight into a field and smashed. Is it right there? Yeah. Yo, here we go. <laughs> this brings back memories. Stealing mum's cars and setting them on light. You see, I don't think all this bracken was here then. All this bracken? All that. Yeah, so I crashed it into there, but if you drive forward a little bit... It were near, it were near to the I tree. went straight into this thing. It was an actual full barn before. But if you slow down and when you get to here, see this, like, thing that's sticking out there? That, it was something like that. It went straight through the windscreen. But you're, what did you say it was? I thought it was a tree, but I'm... It might have been a tree, but... Yeah, fucking hell. But I don't, all that's overgrown more than what I nearly lost my life there. But you never took it! I just want to give you a quick reminder to go and pre-order part one of the We Love Ibiza comic book created by Aura Gold, who helped me create this fun video. It's only £20 and I will be in there in part three. So that's my story about stealing my mum's car and crashing it and blowing up and everything else. I hope you enjoy this little fun story time with me. I have got many more stories that I want to tell. This is one story of many and a lot of them are more mental than this. So <laughs> look forward to that. But I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I will put a link in the description below to where you can go find Aura's comic books. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Please drop me a like if you enjoyed this. Also, if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this and other stuff, then hit that subscribe button. That would be amazing. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you all on the next one.